Today we're going to be doing a partial fractions problem with distinct quadratic factors. And in this particular problem, we've been given the integral of 1 divided by the quantity x cubed plus x. And we need to remember to have our dx there. So this is a partial fractions problem, and we should recognize it as a partial fractions problem. First, because we're dealing with a rational function. We have a fraction. And secondly, because the denominator is uh, factorable. So we're going to want to factor the denominator as completely as we can and then attempt to use partial fractions to solve the integral. So the way that we'll do that, we'll go ahead and just treat the function by itself outside of the integral. We'll go ahead and factor the denominator. So let's go ahead and pull out an x from the denominator and we'll get x times the quantity x squared plus 1. Now you can't factor x squared plus 1, so we've now factored this as completely as possible. And this 1 divided by x times the quantity x squared plus 1 is what we're going to want to use in our partial fractions decomposition. So we have one factor here, x, and we have a second factor, x squared plus 1. Now keep in mind that x is a linear factor, and x squared plus 1 is a quadratic factor. And we distinguish linear factors from quadratic factors because linear factors are um, factors that only have x to the first power or lower. So because this is x to the first here, it's a linear factor. Anything above x to the first power, so x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, etc., would be a quadratic factor. So in this case, because this is x to the first, this is a linear factor. And because we have x squared plus 1 here, this is a quadratic factor. And we're going to need to treat them differently because one is linear and one is quadratic. So in the case of a linear factor, when we use it in a partial fractions decomposition, we keep the linear factor in the denominator, and our numerator will just be the single variable a. When we have a quadratic factor, we'll of course keep the quadratic factor in the denominator, but the numerator will be bx plus c. So notice that uh, because we already used a, we start with b here. We don't want to use the same variable again, so we use the next variable in the alphabet, b, and we start with b, we get bx plus c. If we had another quadratic factor, we would say dx plus e, and then if we had another linear factor, we would say, you know, f, if this were over, um, you know, x plus 1, and this was over, you know, x cubed plus 2 or something like that. So that's how we would separate linear factors from, from quadratic factors. But in this case, all we have is a over x, our linear factor, plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1. That'll be our quadratic factor. So that's going to be our partial fractions decomposition. And now we want to make sure that we get rid of our denominators. The way that we're going to do that is by multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator from the left-hand side. So x times the quantity x squared plus 1, we're going to multiply that by both sides. When we multiply the left-hand side by its own denominator, of course the denominator will cancel and we'll just be left with 1 on the left. On the right-hand side, when we multiply a, right, times um, x times x squared plus 1, when we multiply it, the x's are going to cancel and we'll just be left with a times x squared plus 1. Same thing here when we multiply this fraction here by x times x squared plus 1. We'll get the x squared plus 1 to cancel, and we'll just be left with bx plus c times x. Once we've got everything in this form, we've eliminated our denominators, we're going to need to multiply through the right-hand side so that we get rid of these um, separate terms here. So we'll have ax squared right, we'll foil these out. So we've got ax squared and then plus a. Over here we'll get bx squared plus bx squared and then we'll get c times x which will give us plus cx. So now we're going to want to collect like terms. So what I mean by that is notice here that we've got an x squared term and an x squared term. We're going to bring those together. We've also got an x to the first power term, which is going to be by itself, and then a constant term that has no, vari no x variable on it. That will also be by itself. So we'll do it like this. ax squared plus bx squared, our x squared ter terms coming together, 
plus CX by itself, and then plus A, right? So we'll separate all three of those. And then we want to go ahead and factor out the um, X variables. So what we'll be left with is A plus B times X squared plus C times X plus A. And the reason that we do it like that is because our next step is going to be to equate coefficients on the left and right hand side. So keep in mind that on the left hand side here, this one is essentially, right, 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. We can think about it like that. And let's go ahead and write out our right hand side as well. Let's be x squared plus c times x plus a. So the reason that we write it out like this is because we want to equate coefficients. So notice that the coefficient on the x squared term on the left hand side is 0. On the right hand side, it's a plus b. Same thing here on the x term, we've got 0 for the coefficient and we have c for the coefficient over here. And then the constant on the left hand side is positive 1, on the right hand side it's positive a. So we're going to set these things equal to one another to get uh, equations that we can solve for the variables a, b, and c. So we'll have 0 equals a plus b, right, when we equate these two. Then we'll have 0 equals c, 0 equals c, and then we'll have 1 equals a, right, when we equate these two. So we know that c is equal to 0, we know that a equals 1, now all we need to do is solve for b, and we can plug 1 in for a to do it. So we'll get, because we already solved for a here, we'll plug 1 in for a. So we'll get 0 equals 1 plus b, and then we'll subtract 1 from both sides and find that b is equal to negative 1. So now we have a value for c, a value for b, and a value for a. Once we've solved for each of our coefficients, we can go ahead and plug them back in to our partial fractions decomposition, which we have up here. So, and we can put that back inside of our integral. So we'll have the integral, and instead of one over the quantity x cubed plus x, which was our original function, this time we'll have um, the a over x, right? And we found that a was equal to one, so we'll have one over x, plus we need bx plus c, right? So we know that b is negative one, so let's do negative 1x, and then c we know is equal to 0, so we get plus 0, and that of course is divided by x squared plus 1 from our partial fractions decomposition here. And then we can just go ahead and put dx here on the end of this, and now we're off and running. We need to go ahead and simplify this integral as much as possible, and then perform the integration. So to do that, we'll give ourselves some more space here. Let's go ahead and separate each of these uh, terms into its own integral. So we'll have the integral of 1 over x dx plus a separate integral. And notice here our numerator, we've got essentially negative x, right? That This negative 1 here is redundant. It's going to go away. It's just going to be negative x. And then we can drop the plus 0 as well. So we can actually, and we'll do this in two steps, but we've got negative x over x squared plus 1 dx. And what we can do is rewrite that negative x. We'll bring the negative out in front and we'll move this negative out in front here and we'll end up with minus the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx. So now remember that the integral of 1 over x by definition or formula is natural log of the absolute value of x. So we can go ahead and do that really easily. We've got natural log of the absolute value of x. We'll go ahead and put in our plus c because we want to remember to account for our constant of integration. So we'll go ahead and put in our plus c. And now we just need to deal with this second integral here, right? The x over x squared plus 1. Well, in order to do that, we should go ahead and use u substitution, right? We'll set u equal to x squared plus 1. We'll take the derivative of that to get du, which of course will just be 2x. We need to make sure to add the dx because we just took the derivative. And then we'll divide both sides by 2x in order to solve for dx. So we'll get dx equals du over 2x. Now we can go ahead and make some substitutions. We know that 
we have x over u, and we know that dx is equal to du over 2x. So we've got that inside of our integral, and now let's go ahead over here, natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. We can go ahead and bring this one half here out in front. We'll move that out in front, so we'll get minus one half times the integral. We're gonna get these x's here to cancel. So really all we're left with is one over u du. Well, we've seen that before, right? We already took the integral of one over x. One over u is no different. So we've got natural log of the absolute value of x plus c minus one half, and our integral of one over u will just be natural log of the absolute value of u. We've already added our constant of integration plus c, so we don't need to add another one. Now we just need to go ahead and plug back in for u. We're gonna move the plus c to the end, so we'll have minus one half times the natural log of the absolute value. u is x squared plus one, and then we've got our plus c on the end here. And that's it, that's our final answer. I hope this video helped you guys, and I will see you in the next one.